Before I play, I just want to give a word of praise to the Lord. I want him to, to thank him for Bethany, Pastor Stocksdale, and you great people because my son Chris has had a calling of God on his life. And here he's been able to share and to minister and to answer that call. And we're just really, really grateful to God that he's allowed him to minister here with you people at Bethany. If you would right now, would you just bow your head in prayer with me? <clears throat> Lord, it's just absolutely impossible for us to even begin to express how we could say thanks for the things that you've done for us. We realize that we're so unworthy and so undeserving, but even so, you gave your only son for us even if there were a million angels right here right now they couldn't express the gratitude that we feel because we realize that everything that we are and everything that we hope to be we owe it all to you so Lord right now we offer our praises of thanksgiving and we give you all of the honor and all of the glory in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. As God ministers through this song, I want you to think in these 
terms. During the loud parts, I want you to think and concentrate on the power and the majesty of God. And during the quiet times, concentrate on his love and his compassion and all of those things that he's done for me and for you. And so many times, those things that we haven't thanked him for because we take them for granted. In the name of the song, to God be the glory. Nice to be here. For years I've been hearing about this church. Brother Danny Ost is the ambassador at large for this church. And he always says if you ever go to Louisiana, be sure and go to that church. And I'll tell you, it's great to be here. What a privilege. Most of you know we came here to visit Brother Danny. 
Thank God for your prayers, support, interest, faith, and love. And all that good chicken you shipped across the road today. My theme song tonight will be I'll Fly Away. I want to pray tribute tonight to the founders of this church. You don't see something like this every day. I preach over the country. But I want you to know that God has uniquely blessed this place. And I pray tribute tonight to the original founders, Reverend and Mrs. Stock Phil, and then to the present pastors. I'll tell you, I heard Larry preach and I said, I hope Billy Graham doesn't hear him and get a complex. <laughs> that was a tremendous message. And I think how blessed this place is. Yeah. Yeah. And I thank God for all of you. When I first started to preach, I struggled to get a sermon. <laughs> then after I got it, I didn't know whether I had it or not. <laughs> and after I preached it, I didn't know whether I leased it or not. <laughs> now as I get older, the problem is to find the one the Lord would have me to have. <laughs> so I got three sermons. <laughs> and... <laughs> And so I don't miss the Lord. I know you don't want me to miss the Lord. I'll preach all three of them. The last one ought to be in at midnight. He fell from the upper story. But we'll endeavor to stay with the one. I want to introduce my little sugar booger. Been my wife 47 years. I've had her so long I think I was born with her. Stand up there. <laughs> Just think of it. 47 years. Figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, I'm right when I say I've had her so long I feel like I was born with her. Mine, what? We're still on our honeymoon. <laughs> Some of you old goats have had six looking for the seventh. And I'm with the original. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Now let's get to a text. Thank God I'm preaching in an auditorium or a church tonight where there's no clocks. <laughs> Generally where I go to preach over the country, Brother Larry, there's always a big fat clock hanging on the back wall where some backslidden deacon hung up there. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad it's time out tonight. I've been looking all over for Danny Oss. There he is. God bless him. Aren't we glad to see him? He changed locations on me. I was looking for him over here. Sometimes in a sermon I illustrate. I pick up somebody and we walk together. And uh, Danny's probably thought he'd hide out tonight. <laughs> Got your Bible? How many knew you were coming to church? Let me see your hand. <laughs> Beautiful. You brought your Bible. That's wonderful. Great to see it. Text is Hosea, the 10th chapter, verse 12. We'll look at it together. It's a short chapter, short verse, and a short book. But within the folds of this little verse is a tremendous story. Hosea, the 10th chapter, verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness upon you. If I had one inscription to place on every billboard in America and had the privilege to do so, I'd put these words, it's time to seek the Lord. If I could inscribe over every public building in America tonight, I'd say it's time to seek the Lord. If I could write in every religious periodical, I would write one text. It is time to seek the Lord. It's a strange setting for a text. A nation is backslid. Israel had turned their back on God and gone astray and turned to their idolatrous worship. And God called out a preacher 
prophet by the name of Hosea. And he come riding into town out of the woods on his country mule. High dramatic all the way. Here he is. God gave him the text. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fellow ground. For it's time to seek the Lord. Till he comes. And rains righteousness upon you. There's many, many, many unbelievable, remarkable, I suppose, incomprehensible things in the word of God. It's just like gold mining. You hit nuggets every day. And it's thrilling. But as we study this little text, it breaks out just to say, in my words, as I look at it, it's time to seek the Lord. If it's so important, tell me why. <laughs> you know, the Christians have the answer book. We don't have to say, let our fingers do the walk. And the Spirit of God walks with us through the book. <laughs> now, I didn't bring my amen recorder with me. And I don't have any cue cards. But if you feel like saying amen, say it. Amen. Hallelujah. Time to seek the Lord. Let's get going. Number one. I'm going to nail this down in your soul tonight by the help of Almighty God. And if I meet you 15 years from now or in the millennium, you will quote all five points. Oh, yeah. Time. Seek the Lord. Number one. Time to seek the Lord because of the joy. Of sins forgiven. <laughs> Every time I say this, I get a little happy. And since I'm away from home, I can take my liberty more than ever. <laughs> and you people take yours, I'll take mine. Amen. Time because joy. I'm sick and tired and fed up with a world full of belly aching church members. Yeah. Go around moaning, complaining, belly aching, lip hanging way down. I don't have anything to praise God about. I lost my job. I'm struggling. My wife got fat and all the rest. <laughs> hey! Are you listening? Come on. It's time to seek the Lord because of the joy of sins forgiven. I grew up in a heathen family. I mean they were heathens. They'd even embarrass the heathens. <laughs> My dad made his own booze. He invented jet fuel before there was ever jets. <laughs> and dad made his booze and the stuff was so wild he shot it in a 10 gallon cream can because it was so wild when it took the cork off. I grew up in a heathen home. But one day during the depression, my God, my God, my God. I heard the gospel for the first time first time preacher stood up during the depression most of you weren't born any depression kids here oh hallelujah we'll have a camp meeting tonight <laughs> and the old preacher stood up there God bless him and he said God loves you and I'm sitting with my mom she'd asked us to go to church my two older brothers got away and I was the youngest of the three, and when my mother laid hands on you, she laid hands. She was about 240 pounds, and she had a way of bringing you to her. <laughs> and she said, Gordon, go to church with me. I said, Mama, I'll go with you. My mama was the lady. And I went. Sit way in the balcony. Pair of wash corduroys, old leather jacket. Sitting up there, man said, God loves you. That hit me, and I've never got away from it. The years have come and gone, but the reality of that experience still lives tonight. Come on out of the woods and say, man, glory be to God. We don't have to have a pep talk. Every Sunday to come to church. Come on, right, right. Nobody has to tickle us under the chin or the foot and say, Come on now, Sir Jesus. <laughs> I somehow feel there this might be my first and last trip, so I'm going to make it good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? 
I said, if he loved me like that, I'm, I'm going to serve him all of my life. <laughs> People walk up to me and say, now you've been sick, haven't you? I said, yeah, had a little trouble, a little dab of heart trouble, a little dab of sugar diabetes, and I've always asked God to make me sweet, but God didn't have to overdo it. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And people walk up and say, well, you better take it easy now. You're just about ready for the grave. I say, take another look at me, honey, from the other side. I'm just ready to live. And as long as the joy of the Lord is in my heart, bless God, I'm going to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Joy. Why most Christians could model for Egyptian mummies. <laughs> you ever see Mom Glum? I like it around here. I like the way you sing, praise God, and get excited. I go to some churches where they say, Come on now, sing for Jesus. <laughs> Everybody happy. Listen, friend, we have it inside. <laughs> businessman in Minneapolis said to me the other day he said Gordon with all your problems I just had bought a hotel ten years ago and I owe about three and a half million anybody want to buy a hotel <laughs> and uh, businessman said with all your trouble you always seem to be on top of it how can you be so happy I said because they got the happy maker <laughs> on the inside <laughs> time to see God tonight because of the joy Joy! Sins forgiven. For I say, my brother, we didn't live too far from a church. We're in a rural area, kind of a pea picking area, you know, humble place. <laughs> we weren't too far from a church, my brother, and I'd watch people go to church. And boy, they looked horrible. It looked like they needed oxygen before they <laughs> got to intensive care. <laughs> and uh, I said to my brother, we watched it for some Sundays, and I said, my brother, we were all nicknamed Buck, Fat, and Pug, and Pete. <laughs> and I said to my brother, Fat, and I was Pug, <laughs> Reverend Pug now. I said, they can't be having funerals that often. <laughs> Joy! We'd see more people in church tonight, Brother Larry, if God's people had a little more joy. There'd be more following us to church if we were happy. Yes, so glad. Praise God. Joy is sins forgiven. Oh, if I live a million, billion, trillion, zillion years, I'll never get over Sins forgiven. God buried them. I've been on radio for many years and I get letters from radio regular. One recent said, Gordon Peterson, 25 years ago, I was unfaithful to my husband. I committed adultery. The dear lady wrote and said, Can God forgive me? It's haunted me for 20 some years. How, how wonderful to write her back and say, if we confess our sins, he's faithful. Don't be haunted by the past. Slam the door on the closet of skeletons and walk on out and say, I'm free in the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Free. <laughs> All right, you got that down when you practice it? Amen. Tomorrow when you see the little lady come out with her bathroom on that seemingly doesn't fit and it curlers in her hair that if she gets near a light bulb she may execute or electrocute. You look up at her and say, oh, you never look better, baby. May faith ride on. <laughs> Joy! In an environment that may not be happy. You're building a beautiful church back here. I see it already. That's why you say it's beautiful. Yeah. I think that's tremendous. Brother Larry, I've never been in my church in my life. God be my judge. Where less has been said about money. And more is being done to show. 
I, I'm in shock. I wondered tonight. I said to myself, Gordon, can you preach without two offerings? <laughs> you see, in the Soul's Harbor, sometimes I, I do take two offerings. But then I have been, one time I took two offerings and then I announced the blood bank. And one of the ushers heard a man walking out. He is a stranger. And he said, my God, they take two offerings and now they want my blood. <laughs> You're in a church that's doing something for God. Keep your mouth shut with all your criticisms. Just be happy in the Lord. Say, I'm glad I'm on the moving train. Amen. Glory to God. Now, point number two. You with me? Fine, fine. Number two said the joy of sin is forgiven. And then the joy of Christian fellowship. Can I tell you something? I'm going to slip up close now. Listen. The finest people in your town and city tonight are in this church. Mm. In this church, the finest people are God's people. Boy, some of you don't think too much of yourself. You can't even say amen. God's people. Joy of Christian fellowship. I like what your pastor said this morning. Whether black, thank you, brother. Lee. Whether black or white, we're one in Christ. I like that. Praise God forever. Years ago, before integration of the blacks and whites, my son was in Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, and he was working on Southside Chicago in, among the black young people called me one day and he said dad there's so many of these kids never been out of town so many of these kids never been on a ranch he said would you take them to the ranch I said how many you got Gordy? he said I got as many as you can haul in the Greyhound I said all right so I sent the Greyhound our bus to Chicago to pick them up picked up about 40 kids 48 kids from South Side brought him to Minneapolis <laughs> then I said I'm going to take him to the ranch one week horses everything swimming boating fishing burrow riding rodeo name it we're going to have it and one old boy you know how snivelly critical some old boys can be walked up and say how are you going to keep them around the ranch they're not used to that I just tell them bears in those woods <laughs> We took him to the ranch. Never forget on the way up. There was a halfway restaurant halfway up in the north. I said to the kids, we're all going in here. Those were the days you get a hamburger for a buck and even a Coke throw it in. That was way back there, imagine. And so I said, kids, I'm going to give you all a buck. I'm going to buy a hamburger and a Coke now. Remember, we're going in here and just, just kind of take care of things. You know, 48 black kids, we all file in to that restaurant. I'll never forget it. Man, they looked us over. We're in the north now, buddy. They looked us over. <laughs> and then there was some old boys been drinking down at the end of the row. And I could hear them jabbering and talking. And I said, well, looks like we're going to have a rumble. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now who's going to win. I walked down the road to where these drunks were carrying on. One of them said, hey. You're Gordon Peterson, aren't you? Souls Harbor said, yes. Yeah. I said, where'd you get all the black kids? I said, Chicago. He said, where are you taking them? I said, I'm taking them to the ranch for a week's vacation. And the old drunk pulled out his billfold and he said, hey, man, I want to help you. And he got an offering off all them drunks. <laughs> Sometimes you can get more money off of drugs than you can a church person. <laughs> what in Christ? <laughs> I don't want some of you thinking you say, well, Gordon Peterson, I know some hypocrites in Bethany Baptist Church. I know there's hypocrites there. 
What a startling revelation. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You straighten up, fat cat. I want to talk to you for a minute. You that say they're hypocrites in the church. For every one that's in the church, there's 10,000 in the world. Furthermore, if you're stumbling over a hypocrite, he must be ahead of you or you wouldn't be tripping. <laughs> and number two, if you're trying to hide behind the hypocrite, you're a sick mess for sure. Finest people are God's people. When I'm sick, Brother Larry, I'll look for the church. When my tears flow down my cheeks and I'm reaching, reaching, reaching for somebody to say, I love you. I want to pray for you. I thank God for the church. Hallelujah. Then, if you're overtaken in sin and your life has been mutilated by the devil and you're struggling you don't know where to go oh you say Bethany Baptist Church they specialize in loving people yes. finest people are God's people I don't understand why Christians can't love Christians huh uh, don't sit so pious. You know I'm coming up close to you. <laughs> this place is really charged. You can't even wipe your nose. God's people. When we boys were growing up, uh, we were all close together, you know. And my mother would never let us fight in the kitchen. <laughs> we get to fight, she'd say, boys, outside. If we didn't feel led to go out, she'd help us out. <laughs> and then she'd say, if you want to fight, she'd throw out the boxing gloves. Old, rusty, rough, cuffs, torn, ripped boxing gloves. She'd say, you want to fight? Go outside. So we had a game among us brothers called the Battle Royal. We drew a big circle. We got the choice of one boxing glove. I always took the left because I could really pop with that one. At a given signal, all us brothers jumped in the circle together. Man, you could hit them going. You could hit them coming. Or you could slip around the side and uppercut them. There just wasn't any rules. And the last one in was the winner. He stayed in the circle the longest. I thought after I got saved, I'd never get involved in Battle Royal until I got among church people. <laughs> church people! Hey. What do they think they're doing down at Bethany, building that big civic auditorium? <laughs> Can I tell you to get sinners in? Like that one that said the statement. Get them in. <laughs> I remember when I went on television, 1950. That was way back there. Almost seems like now. Prior to the Antediluvians, way back there. <laughs> And I had a little congregation, but I was enthused about going on TV. Nobody on. You could buy time, buy prime time, class A time. And so I went down to the CBS station. I said, I want to buy a half hour television time. Fine. Cost me $180. Think of it. Now it cost me probably five, ten thousand. dollars Bought it. And the man said, what do you want to put the half hour for? Never said anything up to this time. I said, it's for a gospel program. He said, oh, gospel. He said, you better take 15 minutes. I said, no, I think I can preach that long. Let's make it half hour. And I'll tell you, it's lively. It moves. It's got music. It's got snap. It's, I mean, it's something. I sold you, old boy. And you know what? Went on television. 
Oh, how God blessed. Even the taverns would shut out. We followed the Minneapolis Lakers. You ever hear them, Los Angeles Lakers? Now, we followed them. Oh, but prime time, man. They said to me, where do you want time? I said, right behind the Lakers. I knew if I got my mug in there and got started, I'd keep it on, you know. And you know what? God gave us revival. But before that, I came back from CBS, WCCO television. I was so excited. I said to the church, I had about 50 people. I said, I'm so excited. I'm going on TV. We're going on TV. Faces fell. Some of them dropped their uppers. Slid out over the lowers. Just 50 people. I could almost have service in a phone booth. And you know what? After the service, some of these special holy people came and said, we wish to inform you that we're not going to a church that's going to be on television. That devilish, hellish television. We don't want our children in a church that's going to be on TV. We're leaving. So they picked up their marbles and left. <laughs> I'm down now. <laughs> but God put a burden in my heart. And you know what? You know what? In six months, I had such a revival. God gave me such a revival through television. That across that whole part of the country, in nightclubs and beer joints, they cut all the drinking out for one half hour as the program went on. And the president of CBS called me one day and he said, Gordon, do you know what your rating is? I said, what's a rating? He said, that's the number of sets tuned to your program. I said, don't tell me. He said, your rating is 37.5 more than maybe Super Bowl <laughs> it's a gospel that has power God's people oh yes I know some ugly ducklings get in oh I think sometimes the devil ships them into the church wholesale <laughs> they come in like they've had a bath a bath in Clorox or something <laughs> You know, I just thank God for God's wonderful people. Joy of Christian save for salvation. Joy of fellowship. Joy of service. Let me hurry on. Huh? Service! You ought to be congratulated in this church tonight that you have this number of people in a Sunday night service. And I pray to God that you don't get around a lot of church members who just barely make it Sunday morning and they can't come Sunday night. You know what they say up in my country? They say we can't have anything special Sunday night. The Christians won't come. I say, what a tragedy. <laughs> joy of Christian service. I don't know if I couldn't work for God, what I'd want to do except drop dead and go home, I suppose. Joy of service. I look at Brother Danny Oss, Sister Oss, the years they plowed for God and still plowing and gonna plow. Glory to God. Joy of Christian service. If I couldn't preach, I'd say, Lord, let me teach a Sunday school class. Amen. Let me do something. I'm sick and tired and fell up, fed up. I'm looking for a chair. Will you spare that one, brother, please? I'm going to illustrate. I'm getting tired and I want to sit down, too. I'm getting tired seeing preachers have to push church members. I'm coming around. <laughs> Yeah, I do this, but I do that, but, but, but. If you aren't careful, you'll butt your way right out of the kingdom of God. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing preachers have to carry church members along. 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 Holding them up. Listen. The joy of the Lord is what? It's our strength. Strength. Service. 
Whatever the pastor asks you to do, do it. Do it. Don't be afraid. Don't back up. Don't compromise. Do it.